Welcome back to Talking to Myself. I'm Carol Power, author of Is a Snora Snores, and a whole lot of other books and movies waiting on the sidelines to be produced. I'm here with Nala and Grizzly, so they might make a few noises while I'm recording. Last month, we talked about learning to accept ourselves and to fight against all the negativity around us. How are you doing with that? I was walking the other day feeling really bad about myself when I remembered recording that episode. Sometimes I want to help people to be positive and to accept themselves, but I don't do a very good job accepting myself. You ever hear the phrase, practice what you preach? Well, I need lots and lots of practice. How about you? The reason I was feeling so bad is I got two rejection letters for two of my books. I was ready to quit writing. Remember I said writers get a lot of rejections? Well, we do, and I don't like it. I was feeling all negative. I was feeling like a big failure. Really, really big failure. Old people feel like failures too. Just because you get older doesn't mean you have it all figured out. It's not just something people feel when they're young. Have you ever tried something and got rejected? Maybe you wanted to be on a club baseball team, but they said you couldn't join. It doesn't feel so great, does it? It makes you kind of want to quit. Makes you feel like a failure. But if you're serious about playing ball, you're going to have to practice more and figure out how to improve your game. Maybe you just need to find a different baseball team. The swilling in those feelings of rejection and failure will not help you become a great ball player. Another feeling that sometimes takes over is worry. I'm going to need a lot of practice getting over this problem. It's something I've struggled with all my life. As a kid, I worried so much about going to the doctors that I would puke at the doctor's office. I worried while riding the school bus, thinking about who might pick on me. Fortunately, I didn't puke. I worried on the job, wondering if I was ever going to get fired. I still worry. Worry is my best friend. No, not really. talking about the kind of worry that makes you sensible, about being aware that you make and take precautions, like looking both ways when you cross the street, or putting sunscreen on, or seeing your doctor, or eating healthy. Those are sensible things. When I talk about worry, I mean it's like having a friend who has to ruin everything with negativity and fear. You can't rock climb because you're going to fall and die. You can't see the doctor because she's going to find a terrible disease and you're going to die. You can't go on vacation because your car is going to get stranded and you're going to die. You can't have a friendship because the last friend hurt you and you're going to die. Am I afraid to die? Yep, I'm old, but I still want to live, and I think my worry has a lot to do with my fear of death. Do you worry? I think we let worry hang around because we think by worrying we can prevent bad things from happening. For me, it's death. We think by worrying we can control our lives. The truth is, worrying does not prevent bad things from happening. They can happen whether we worry about them or not. In reality, the things we worry about do not necessarily come true the way we imagine. Worrying does not give us control over our lives. Worrying only makes you live in a constant state of emotional heartburn. Have you ever had heartburn? 
It's that awful burning feeling in your throat after eating hot dogs or spicy food. Yuck. I don't like heartburn. I don't want emotional heartburn. What about you? Do you like that nervous feeling you always have? I think it's time we show worry to the door and ask it to leave our house. Goodbye, worry. Don't write and don't come back. Some of the experts say you should set some time aside for worry. Yeah, you heard me right. I know I just finished telling you to kick worry out of your life, but the experts say that you should set some time aside and just take that time to worry. Maybe you want to sit and write it down. I worry about falling off my bike. I worry about getting sick. I worry that no one's going to talk to me at the party. I worry about not getting my homework done. I worry about flunking my math test. I worry, just, just go on and on and put a timer on. Try doing it and I might have gotten five minutes into this. And I, after a while, I was like, I have nothing more to say. The other thing that happened is when I said my worries out loud, they seemed to have lost their power over me. Does that make sense? Like when I was saying, I am afraid to visit the doctor. I said it out loud. All of a sudden it's like, oh, maybe I'm not afraid to visit my doctor. I, I don't know. I think you should try it. If you have a problem with worry, take time out every day and just say, I'm going to worry for 20 minutes or 10 or 5. When you are done, you take that worry and you set it aside and you don't think about it the rest of the day. If you feel that little poke of worry coming into your mind, just say, nope, I've already talked about you, worry. You go away. Leave me alone. Hello, Nella. I wonder if Nella worries. Do you think dogs worry? So back to my uh, articles and the experts. One thing also that I read over and over again is that when we worry, we're letting our minds imagine things that never will happen or never have happened. Think of it, the word, imagine, imagination. We all love to use our imagination, right? You might have a writing class at school. Your teacher might say, use your imagination. But imagination, when we use it to worry, is not such a great thing. I have a sister who told me once, but she likes to imagine the worst thing possible because then, if it does happen, she's not surprised. Think about that. Here we are, worrying and worrying about something that might never even happen. Don't you think it's better to live our lives with peace, with a little joy, Instead of letting worry just constantly hum, you know, that, you know, like your computer hums in the background or your washing machine or, or something, it's that hummy, stupid noise that you hear. Get rid of it. Don't worry. Sometimes we need a little more effort at pushing back at worrying. One way we can do that is by writing it down. Get a journal, get a notebook, get a piece of paper, write it down. But writing it down helped me to look at that situation in a different light. I learned things about myself and about others. Writing it down gave me hope. Hope is so much better than worry. 
isn't it? If you're not into writing, draw a picture, sing a song, skip some rope, dance, or yodel. Have you ever yodeled? Yodel me, yodel me, howlah I learned that from YouTube, Yodeling 101. Not sure I'm doing it correctly, but it's fun. Try it with me. Yodeling hee hee, howling lo hoo hoo. Yodeling hee hee, howling lo hoo hoo. All right, that's enough yodeling for now. If your worry is so extreme, you may need to see a therapist. Tell your parents. Talking to an expert can help you. Okay, well, I'm done worrying about worrying. I am glad that you tuned in this month. I think when we finish, I'm going to go out and yodel some more. Thanks for joining me. Have a great month. Cheers. Hey, I forgot to mention something. I'll be at the Delavan Brick Street Days on Saturday, June 19th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Stop by and get your copy of Is a Snore Snores or one of my other books. See you there!